Mr. Happy Living here, and I'm happy to be broadcasting from WITV7 in the beautiful Queen City, Charlotte, North Carolina. Hey friends, can you imagine how you'd feel living the life you were put on this planet to live, doing work you love with people you love, in places you love, and all the while creating something of real value to others? That's what I call a life of significance. And I can tell you, it's a very happy life. And so can Dr. Sundra Dalton-Smith. She's a rest rock star and my special guest today. Hey, Sandra, welcome to the Something Significant Show. Hi, thanks for having me. Oh, it's our pleasure. So just tell our audience, what are you doing these days to leave your mark of significance on the world? Yes, well, by practice, I'm an internal medicine physician in practice for over 20 years. And over the past 10 years, my focus has been on helping people understand the relationship between their exhaustion and the type of rest that they need. And in the last 10 years, you've been finding plenty of exhausted people to work with? Uh, more than enough. There's an abundance of people that are exhausted and burned out and overwhelmed by their schedules. And so most of us have the mindset that we just need to take a break, go on vacation, you know, but what happens when you do that and you're still exhausted? So I like looking at how do we live a well-rested lifestyle? Very good. And give the audience just a kind of an overview of, of all that you're doing with your I Choose My Best Life website and your books and coaching and podcast and speaking. Just give us a little overview of what your business looks like. Yes. Well, I Choose My Best Life is my podcast. Um, I, we launch new recordings every Wednesday. Uh, usually I have on interesting guests to go over different topics related to how do we make better choices. And then um, my work is spent now majority of time speaking with different organizations, companies, and individuals working with them to help them understand how do we incorporate more of these restorative practices within companies so that we can build up a wellness and well-being culture. You know, how do you take that into your day-to-day -day life so that your work-life integration is healthy and is thriving. And so there's a lot of different layers to that. So it includes working at it from the corporate standpoint with companies, working at it with individuals so that they can apply it to their own personal and professional lives. And then also working with it within schools because I feel like there's a lot of teens who are burned out. Yeah, and sure. you know we see a rise in teenage suicide and different things that come when people feel overwhelmed and excessive pressure on their lives. So many different facets and groups that I work with, but all of them really needing the same thing, a better understanding of their own need for rest and their own and the ways with which they actually experience that rest. Yeah, it's interesting because I, I came to know you doing two things that helped me to, to restore and gain energy. One is sitting in my sauna in the morning and two is listening to Jesus Calling. And so I was listening to you while I was taking this nice sauna and said, wow, this lady really knows what she's talking about when it comes to rest. And so here we are. Yes. Well, I think that's fantastic because so often, you know, when I talk about rest, you know, I, I love talking about the science of it. I love talking yeah. about the research, but a huge part of that's spiritual. And so yeah. I have a few books down and all of them have a spiritual scientific basis to them. The one that has that Jesus Calling was featuring was my book, Sacred Rest, Recover Your Life, Renew Your Energy, Restore Your Sanity. And I think yeah. that's the one that has really just gotten a lot of traction in the media recently because it does merge the two, the science and the spiritual. Yeah, I love that. Okay, Sandra, let's, let's let our audience get to know you through the mathematical equation. I'm not sure you've ever done that before. Been known through a mathematical equation of our happy formula. And you okay. know what it is, it's capacity plus purpose equals happy. So let's start with capacity. What are your practices for building your personal capacity, whether it's physical, mental, spiritual, financial, emotional, what is it that you do on a regular basis to create all the capacity you need to take really good care of yourself and your loved ones and still have plenty left over to give to others? Yeah, so that's the foundation of those seven types of rest because I failed at that initially. <laughs> my capacity was very small because I was constantly pouring and draining myself with no, no uh, really thought process to how to pour back into those places I was emptying. And so from that, uh, what I practice is actually looking at these seven different areas, um, the physical, mental, spiritual, emotional, social, sensory, and creative. 
And so every day I take a bit of a self-assessment to determine where is it that I've poured out the most today and what do I need to do to start pouring back into that place? And so I think that probably is the, the greatest thing that I do within my day is actually being self-aware, uh, taking that assessment, mm -hmm. taking that, uh, really thinking about and being intentional about the type mm -hmm. of rest that I need and the areas that I need to focus on for that day, because it changes. One day I might be pouring out more creatively, maybe I'm writing or producing something. The next day it may be more emotionally because I'm in the hospital working with patients. And so just being really attuned to where it is I'm draining my energy. Yeah, and so just the awareness of all seven is one major factor, right? Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. Give, it, give us an example of, of one or two of your practices that you, you know, if you find you're emotionally drained or if you find you're physically drained or spiritually drained, what do you do? Well, one of them is, I would say, if I find that I am mentally drained, that's one that I tend to get a lot. <laughs> so, okay. so I'm getting mentally drained. I feel like my head's too filled. Then one of the things that I do is I actually practice brain dumping because sometimes my, I have a tendency to ruminate over information. So that rumination could either be brainstorming as some people call it, or yeah. for me, it could be worrying, but it's still ruminating thoughts where my mind is in this kind of endless loop and I can't quiet them enough to be able to calm it. And so brain dumping or mind dumping is uh, how, what some people define it as is very helpful for me. Being able to actually take it out of my head and put it on something concrete, like a piece mm -hmm. of paper or a journal, that's always been very helpful for me. And that clears up space, so to speak, for me to be able to kind of get to a place of peace and actually being able to be more receptive to the, what's going around me, to be actually be able to be in the moment. Because I find that sometimes that's very difficult. I might be physically mm -hmm. at my child's soccer game, but mentally yeah. <laughs> thinking yeah. about all these things. So it helps me to actually be more in the moment. And another practice that I found to be very helpful is actually practicing creative rest. I spend a lot of energy being creative in ways that really um, problem solving. Problem solving is a creative process. So lots of time problem solving within healthcare. And so being aware that for me, I get creative rest when I'm in nature. Mm -hmm. So spending time going for short walks, um, just making sure that I'm, I'm bringing in creative elements within my day, whether that's changing the lock screen on my computer to something that's inspirational, like the ocean or some mountains or flowers, but, or even bringing in flesh, fresh flowers sometimes so that I'm bringing in some of those natural elements into my indoor setting and being aware that that actually helps me to feel inspired and it helps me to feel more creative. And one last question at this stage, you mentioned spirituality and what I've been noticing lately or, or becoming aware of lately is there's, there's certain, when we look at physical fitness, mental fitness, um, financial fitness, which is not a part of yours, part of mine, uh, mental, you know, all those kind of the energy that's created in those areas is finite. Mm -hmm. So as you use it, then you need to rest it and, and replenish it, right? Yes. But, but spiritual energy is different. It's infinite. It's like when you're, you're first fall in love, you just, you'd never run out of energy of seeing that person or with you when you're doing work that you love, you know, you can just keep going and your it energizes you. So can you talk a little bit about the difference between what I call earthly finite energy and spiritual infinite energy? Yeah, I think that's a great point because, you know, with spiritual energy, we are getting that energy from a source that does not have a limit. You know, so I think it's, it's, it's important to recognize that, that unlike things that are in the natural that do have limitations and confinement, that spirituality doesn't have those, those constraints on them. You know, the thing that we have to be aware of, however, is that for us to receive it, we're, we're usually what's blocking. Yes. <laughs> it's not that the energy has any lack. It's that we have our own kind of uh, ceilings that we place on what we can receive and yeah. to just be aware of that. And then to create moments when we open ourselves up for more, when we open ourselves up yeah. to receive a greater portion of that, that filling. That's great. Okay, before moving on to purpose, let's discuss the amazing capacity building concept called Kaizen. It's the Japanese idea that small incremental improvements add up over time to yield great big results. And it means there's always something you can do better tomorrow than you did today. I love it because it keeps me always moving forward in some way every single day. 
So Sandra, how do you Kaizen your personal capacity to continuously become more so you can continuously give more? Well, for me, that really boils down to content creation. So as a writer, I feel like that is the area where I'm constantly growing. I, I always like to say, you know, I, it doesn't really matter how great any of my past books have done, there's a greater one coming mm -hmm. because I feel like with each, with each opportunity to write, with each opportunity to research, you know, the whole process should be improving, should be mm -hmm. going from glory to glory. There should be an acceleration that's happening along the way. And so that's how I approach content creation. I, I like to look at it as, yeah, that was great. Now let's see where we can move forward. Yeah, that's good. Uh, one of my quotes that I, we're not to the quote section yet, but it's a quote, I can't remember the guy's name, um, but you're perfect just as you are and you could use a little improvement. So your last book might've been great, but how do we make it just a little bit better? Okay, so let's dive into the second element of the happy formula. And it seems to me that major life transformations and discovery of purpose often come from devastation, addictions, disease, death, disaster, some big crisis shakes life. However, mm -hmm. in my book, Turning Inspiration into Action, I share a transformational process that I've used to discover my purpose through inspiration. So how about you, Sandra? Was there a specific moment or event or crisis or inspiration that revealed to you the purpose you were meant to live? I would say I've had both experiences. I've had the, the negative one and the positive one. I would say the negative one was with my mother's death. She died at childbirth. And so my dad went in uh, to be a new dad and walked out a widow. So, you know, that was the one that framed she, my... She died at childbirth with you or with yes. a sibling? With you? With me. Oh mm -hmm. my gosh. Wow. And so my dad walked out a widow with a newborn. That was my me. And so that framed a lot of my thought process around healthcare and God ah. and everything else. <laughs> so that would be probably that first. And then the second one, the one that is. Can I ask you before you leave yeah, that? Yeah, right ahead. Any siblings before that? No, nope, I'm an only child. Only child. And you lost mom at birth. Oh my gosh. So you can imagine that framed a lot of my life because yes. that's, a trip, that's a pivotal stage. Wow. And so um, the one that as far as inspiration that I would say has really shaped my life would be, I, I was inspired with watching specifically a certain physician when I was a child and how she engaged with others. And mm -hmm. I'd never, uh, people ask me all the time, how did you know you wanted to be a doctor or when did you want to become a doctor? I can't remember not wanting to be a doctor. My dad tells me that I walked in and I just kind of fell in love with this one pediatrician when I was like five or six. And I still remember her now <laughs> because good. she had such a great impression on my life. And he said, that I, we left that appointment and I turned to him and I said, I want to be like her when I grow up. And I've never said I wanted to be anything since. So I, I never had any other <laughs> like career aspirations. That was it. And I, you know, I can recall even now, because I've had the pleasure of actually, you know, being able to stay in touch with her to some degree. I, I even now, when I think about just her, her way of ministering is the only way I can describe it to her patients. It was something that went so far beyond her education, because I, she was definitely smart and knowledgeable and, you know, able to pass all of those things to become a physician, but there was something more. Hmm. And it was the more that I was actually drawn to. Hmm. Interesting. Does she deserve a shout out? Can, can we hear the doctor's name? Yes, her name is Dr. Lee Sai. Uh, awesome. And one, one more question on, on inspiration and, and life paths. What was the catalyst that took you from being doctor to a rest rock star to really focusing <laughs> on this idea of rest? Because that, well, that was out. a change, right? <laughs> yes. The catalyst was I burned out. I had um, two babies uh, back to back. They were both toddlers under the age of two. At the time I burned out, I had a thriving medical practice. I had, um, you know, book contracts and media and all the stuff that makes you feel like, yes, I've arrived. I'm successful. And I just recall coming home one day and laying out on my floor. And I thought, you know, God, if this is success. I don't really want it. I, this isn't, this is the, the life I thought I was building. 
And so, you know, I, I came to the realization that if I could put so much work and effort into building that life that I hated, that I could build a life that I enjoyed. And I just needed to make better choices. That's where I choose my best life came from. I, I wanted to choose a life that I enjoyed, a life that brought me joy and, and was honoring my gifts and my talents without exhausting them in the process. So what was there, I always like to try to find, was there a moment you, you were, if you were burned out, that was a process. Mm -hmm. And was there a catalyst or was there, there some inspiration or a message from God or do, what was the, the thing that said, okay, I have to change. And that change is going to be learning how to rest. Yeah. So that particular day, there was a, one particular day that I picked up my kids from daycare and you know, it was a normal day for me. I got out of the office at five or six o'clock and picked up the kids, came home, put them in front of the TV for a moment for myself, just before my husband got home. And I remember just, you know, laying down on my four-year floor. And in that moment, that's when I was thinking, you know, this is not the life that I wanted. And I, I did feel like God never spoke to me audibly, but I really felt like God spoke to me in my heart. You've never even asked me about rest. You've never even asked me about your exhaustion or even brought this up, you know, in any prayer time or conversation. And so that was the moment where I, it really, that whole concept of there's an aspect of living that I'm not experiencing. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm excelling at the working yeah. <laughs> and I'm ne completely neglecting the rest. And that's really where the title of the book came from, Sacred Rest. I needed to see it as something I'm treasured and I valued. And it wasn't, hmm. you know, with my mother, I talk about it in the book with my mother dying at childbirth. I've always kind of taken ownership of my own life. It's like, okay, well, you can't trust God because if he couldn't get that right. Then <laughs> we're not going to trust him with very much else after that. So it was all about, you know, let me see what I can do. Let me see what I can accomplish. Let me yeah. grind it out and make it work in my own strength. And so I come, and although I had, you know, come to a place where I was okay spiritually, you know, I had accepted kind of a spiritual walk. I still didn't have a level of trust at that mm. level at that time to be able to trust God enough to rest. Yeah. Oh, that's great. You gave me goosebumps just, just telling that story. So Sandra, let's take a commercial break because I want to tell everyone about three things. Why I love my far infrared portable sauna, how to save a hundred bucks when they buy one of their own and how their purchase will support a great big donation to WITV7. Mr. Happy Living here. I love good things made by good people. That's why I love my relaxed sauna. I bask in its healing far infrared rays every morning. In just 20 minutes, I sweat as much as if I'd run four miles, but I'm not exhausted. Instead, I feel great. And I've boosted my metabolism, burned calories, sweated away toxins, and some body fat too. What a relaxing and healthy way to start a day. A study in Finland found People who regularly use saunas live longer and have fewer fatal heart problems. So get the benefits of a sauna in your home for your family too. It's surprisingly affordable, it's portable, and it fits nearly anywhere. Go to happyliving.com and select Partners in Happy to get 100 bucks off any purchase of $1,000 or more. And I'll donate another $100 for every order placed during the entire month of December to WYTV7. So here's my idea for you. Get a relaxed sauna for yourself this holiday season and give another as a gift. Okay, we're back. And this is the Something Significant Show. And I'm Matt Gerstner. Hey, friends, do yourself a great big health favor. Make the investment to buy a relaxed sauna for your home. It's the only sauna that filters out all of the non-healing light rays, so you can totally absorb the scientifically proven healing rays of the far infrared range. I use mine every morning and I absolutely love it. And now back to my rest rock star, Dr. Sandra Dalton-Smith. Sandra, I recently discovered an article called The Science Behind the Power of Giving. It was on livescience.com. And it says that the act of giving itself 
can be a gateway to discovering your reason for being on this planet. It concludes that compelling scientific data supports the notion that giving one's time, talents, and treasures is a powerful pathway to discovering purpose, transcending difficulties, and finding fulfillment and meaning in life. So I updated the formula. Capacity plus purpose plus giving equals really happy. So what do you think, Sandra, from your own life experience, has giving your time, talents, and treasures been a pathway for discovering your purpose and transcending difficulties that you've faced and for bringing real meaning into your life? I definitely believe that. I think that, and it's giving, as you mentioned, all of those things uh, in different times to different people in different ways. But I feel like giving really does help all of us to be able to connect at a deeper level with others. And so, you know, one of the ways that I feel we heal is by uh, giving what it is sometimes that we need most. You know, I think it's, it feels easy to give from a place of your fullness and from a place of where you already kind of have an abundance and an overflow. There's a bit of sacrifice that comes when you give from your, your own place of need. And I feel like that in, at times can be a, a huge blessing because it allows you to look at, at the problem outside of yourself. Mm. And so I, I, I oftentimes challenge people to that, you know, not to just give from their, from their abundance, but to, if you're, example, if you're lonely, then give the, the gift of your presence to somebody else. Mm. You know, just like you want to experience someone's presence, go to the nursing home, you know, right. as a physician, I know, there's a lot of people there who don't have family. Nobody visits. Go there and sit down with someone, play a game of cards or bingo mm. or whatever is going on in there and just give the gift of your presence because you both will get blessed in the process. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so that's the science and I agree with you and, and with the report. Uh, and I've experienced it myself, that wonderful feeling that comes from the fourth element of significance, doing work that creates value for others. And I've experienced firsthand how the magic of life comes not from getting more, but from giving more. But it's more than that. It's not just the giving that's magical. What I've been learning, Sandra, is when you're, it's when you're giving from living in your purpose. That's where the real magic lies. So tell us, how does it make you feel when you're giving to others through the work you were put on this planet to do? And a client writes, Dr. Dalton Smith took the time to get to know the needs of our organization and use that information to deliver content that many employees said they would put into practice immediately. I feel confident in recommending her services. She took the time to know our needs and address them in an impactful way. And another writes, Sandra recently did a program for my international group of leaders. Her content was awesome. Her strategies doable and her, her presentation professional. She was an ideal guest and I highly recommend her. And I can brag on you with one more. She says, Sandra is an expert in her field and a wonderful speaker an engaging presenter and was an incredible addition to our event program. Her session got great feedback from our audience and we jump at the chance to have her come back and speak to us again. So Sandra, how does all that make you feel? It's amazing. And I think what's most amazing about it is I have as much fun as they do. <laughs> so, you know, it's great to get those reviews when you're going somewhere speaking or you get those emails from someone who's read your book or those Amazon reviews and all of those things. But there's something really awesome when you get those and as wonderful as they are, you had so much fun. You know, you didn't really need anything else. You didn't really, you don't really care if they gave you any other accolades. You had a great time just by having the, the opportunity. You had a great time just by giving, being given the chance to yep. share with yourself. Yep, and, and let me take that one step further. So you're, you're an author, I'm an author. And if I were to recommend a book to you, uh, Man's Search for Meaning, it's one of my favorite books. And if I recommend it, hey, Sandra, you should read this book. And you come back and you, and you read it and you say, Matt, that was a great book and it changed my life. That would make me feel good. But if you read my book and you came back and said, Matt, that changed my life, that would make me feel like this profound joy. Mm -hmm. And I think the difference is my book is a part of me. So what would be the difference with you when somebody says, you know, sacred rest changed my life versus just another recommendation that was actually a good one? 
Yeah, I, I think you're exactly right. It's, it's because I'm putting myself into it. Um, same as when I'm on a stage talking. I'm not, I don't show up and read my talks. I show up with a couple of bullet points um, and I share off my heart. And so when someone is connecting, they're not just connecting to the words or connecting to the content, they're actually connecting with my heart. They are connecting with the essence of who I am. And so when that actually can help transform someone's life, honestly, to me, it actually helps me recognize that it's not all me. They're actually, yeah. I'm a conduit of, for God and I'm actually delivering my portion of who he is into the world. And so that's their opportunity to experience how he expresses himself through me. And that's why it's so important to find your reason for being on this planet, folks. It makes your life so much easier. And so purpose and giving make this great big happy circle. Giving your time and talents and treasures is a powerful pathway, says science, to finding purpose. And giving from living in your purpose brings this profound joy to your life. So giving leads to purpose and giving from purpose leads to joy. And that's the exponential power of the happy formula. Capacity plus purpose plus giving equals happy to the third power. And that's really, truly, deeply happy. Does that sound about right to you, Sandra? It does. <laughs> it really does. Um, I'm often asked, how do I continue to do all the things that I do and stay in a good spirit and stay in a good place? And I think that's exactly the reason. That's it. Awesome. Good stuff. So let's wrap things up with a lightning round. I'll read a few of my very favorite quotes and then you respond telling us what it means to you. The very okay. first thing that comes to mind because it's called a lightning round. Okay. Okay, here we go. From Billy Joel, paraphrasing Socrates. The more I learn, the less I know. Wow, light. Okay, my brain is like lightning. The more I learn, the less I know. That really it's just it's interpreting what you're learning. For me, that's what I think of. It's the interpretation of what I learned. Very good. From Adya Shanti. I love this one. A total acceptance of yourself brings about a total transcendence of yourself. Oh, I love that one. Um, when I hear that, what that makes me think of is that I need to be good with me in order for me to be good to the world. Yes. And why, doctor, is it so hard for us to accept ourselves? I think we're compared too much. I think we're so busy looking at, and I'll just share something really quick if we have time. As a speaker, you know, it's very easy to look at all the great speakers in the world and, and think, I can't do it like that person, or I can't talk like this person. But what I find is when I accept how I communicate, then people get it. When I tried to be like these other people and follow their models, it was a failure yep. <laughs> because yep. I'm not them. And so I have to do it my way for it to really resonate the way it's supposed to. Right on. You got to be authentic. This is from T.S. Eliot. Because I know that time is always time and place is always place. And what is actual is actual only for one time and only for one place. I rejoice that things are as they are. Yes, that, I think that's a great one to keep in mind that we live in the moment. We're not, we can't stay in the past. We can't live for the future. We have to stay in the moment because moments are constantly changing. And as you stated, time is only time, place is only place. It's a moment and that moment will pass and you have other moments. So enjoy the moment that you're in. Yes, yes. Okay, this is the show anchor one from Goth. Whatever you can do or dream you can do, begin it. Boldness has genius, power, and magic in it. Begin it now. Yeah, so that makes me think just put action to your faith. You know, when you're thinking something, you know, his thoughts are greater than your thoughts. His ways are greater than your ways. If you can think it, then it can be possible and just have the faith to step out into it and do it. Very good. Okay, folks, <clears throat> now it's your turn to be a giver too. If you can hear my voice and you were inspired by today's show with Dr. Sandra Dalton-Smith, please share some love with our talented broadcasting team by donating what you can to WITV7. They're a 501c3 charity on a mission to educate, empower, and encourage. They do good works with your kindness. Sandra, I just love your insight that life is not about all the doing, Rather, it's about the being 
the seeing, the knowing, and the experiencing. And I admire how you're so brilliant and passionate and dedicated about teaching others to intentionally rest well in all seven types of rest they need to live their very best lives, physical, mental, spiritual, emotional, sensory, social, and creative. And I'm super happy that you've shared your powerful voice on our show today. Would you please just take a minute or so and share any parting remarks you'd like to leave with our audience? Yes, I'd just like to invite them to be able to um, take our free assessment at restquiz.com. We've had over 250,000 people who have taken that assessment and found out which of the seven types of rest they need most. And so I would love for you to join us on that journey of, of getting back to a well-rested life. Folks, I took the test yesterday and I scored pretty well. It's uh, restquiz.com, right? Yes, that's correct. Very good. All right. I also want to thank WITV7 for hosting and promoting our show so we can keep interviewing inspiring guests like Sandra and reaching folks just like you, ready to create your own extraordinary lives. A special thank you to our sponsors for the entire month of December. Relax sauna and happy living. Remember, folks, I'll donate 100 bucks for every order placed during the entire month of December. So buy one sauna for your home and give another as a gift. And most especially, thank you viewers and listeners. You'll find links to websites and social media and all things Dr. Sandra Dalton-Smith. Find her, friend her, go to her website for articles and assessments and quotes and freebies and all kinds of great things to help you make better choices every day. You can listen to her podcast too and buy her books. All of it's at ichoosemybestlife.com. And don't forget about that rest deficit assessment at restquiz.com. From me to you, dear friends, I love you and I want you to be happy by living your life to its fullest, to believe as I do that a better self is always possible today and every day for the rest of our lives. I hope Sandra's got you motivated and feeling super confident and bold, ready for action. Ready, ready to start discovering your unique and distinct reason for being on this planet, because that's where you're going to make your mark of significance on the world, and the world needs to hear from you. Till next time, I'm Matt Gersper. You are awesome, and this is the Something Significant Show. And we're out.